Hello there, my fellow pyromaniacs, and welcome to another episode of Battletech Lore focused on the Battlemech department. I know I've been doing a lot of non Battlemech videos more recently, and starting today, in order to compensate for that a little bit, the next two or three videos are gonna be on Battlemechs. I'm also gonna have a small voting section at the end of the video, so if you want, please stay until then. Regarding the topic of today, it is gonna be a specialist mech, known as the Firestarter. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Some basic stats on the guy include... It is a light battle mech, weighing at 35 tons, its top speed is 97 kilometers an hour, and its rounded price is about 3 million Seabells. The Firestarter was designed by Argyle Technologies of Sky in 2550 to perform the rather interesting role as an incendiary mech. The most popular and widely used variant of the Firestarter, the FS9H, would debut in 2703 and become the standard to which all the other incendiary mechs were compared. The FS9H was produced almost exclusively from its introduction up to the beginning of the Amari Civil War in early 2776, with close to 3,000 of them seeing active duty. Because of this mech's popularity with all the great houses, Argyle Industries continued to produce spare parts and new mechs prior to and during the Succession Wars, at least until their Argyle plant and headquarters were destroyed in the Third War. When the company indicated that they would not rebuild their plant, Coventry Metalworks eventually picked up production. Although many regiments did contain a number of the fire starters, they were traditionally assigned at a company or regimental level, rather than assigned to an actual lance, with the commander then deploying them to support an attack group or scout a wooded area. The reason for this was that the mech had such a specialized role that it was deemed useless to assign it to actual lances. Although protected by 5.5 tons of armor, and capable of jumping up to 180 meters thanks to its 6 jump jets, the Firestarter could do little against a medium or heavyweight opponent. Instead, an entire series of tactics were developed around it, and its ability to start wildfires. With skillfully placed blazes routing an enemy, or covering a retreat, or hampering pursuit. The Firestarter mech warriors were very fond of setting fires on heavily wooded areas as enemy mechs advance through it, or any buildings within which the enemy could be sheltering. Other uses for this mech included performing scorched earth tactics, literally, or lead units of wasps and stingers in deep penetration scouting and light raiding missions. The policy regarding the Firestarter did change in the later Succession Wars, as it was discovered that this mech performed very well as a scout, able not only to start fires to prevent enemy pursuit, but also clear ambush areas for the advancement of friendly units. In the wake of the Fourth Succession War, the Firestarters also found themselves being assigned to lances as replacements for the losses of other light and medium mechs forcing the mech to perform in an active frontline role. This evolution would continue until the Federated Commonwealth unveiled a new version in 3049, the so-called FS9S, featuring an entire host of recovered lost tech to enhance its scouting ability. The Firestarter carries four Purity L-series flamers for incendiary work, one in each arm, one forward-facing in the center torso, and the other rear-facing in the center torso. The flamers can set fire to pretty much anything flammable very quickly. For additional anti-personnel work, the Firestarter also has two De Bruce RF machine guns mounted on either side of the torso, which, when combined with the flamers, can make short work of infantry units. The Firestarter carries one Magna Mark II medium laser in either arm, for when it has to engage hard targets like a vehicle or another battle mech. One ton of ammo located on the torso supplies the machine guns, while ten heat sinks keep it cool. The new Firestarter made its name in the Victoria War. 
As Thompson's August warriors reinforced the Capellan defense of Victoria in January 3104, their fire starters happily joined in the systematic destruction of the world's infrastructure. Detached to aid Warrior House Kamata, Thompson's fire starters skirted the main battle and infiltrated the already damaged Trellis Electronics facility. They would literally blaze a trail through the factory, making sure the surviving workers burned along with their machines. After immolating it, the lands exited the factory, just before House Kamata bombarded it. The Firestarters were unable to return to the August Warriors though, so they fled alongside the Kamata unit, and they were the only August Warriors to leave Victoria alive. Although it is a rather unusual battle mech, the Firestarter did have a lot of variants. And while I haven't said this in a while, I still gotta say that not all the pictures are representative of the variants. The FS9A This is the original Firestarter, the production of which stopped with the introduction of the FS9H. This one carried small lasers instead of machine guns and mounted an additional ton of armor. The FS9B after the capture of Coventry, the Word of Blake converted the Firestarter line to produce a new variant in 3070 that could be better integrated into their own units. One additional ton of armor was added when compared to the S variant, and it was upgraded to light ferrofibrous. A chassis was replaced with an endosteel model, and the light fusion engine provides power. Free flamers are devastating to conventional units, while an ER medium laser provides firepower against hardened targets. A C-free eye computer allows it to share targeting data with other units. The use of single heat sinks is confusing in such a unit, and it means that a bee can build up heat quite quickly. It uses eight improved jump jets to cover up to 240 meters in a jump. The FS9C this one is an upgrade of the Firestarter manufactured by Coventry Metalworks for the periphery starting in 3064. The armor was again upgraded to ferrofibrous, and it carries two flamers, two medium lasers, two rocket launcher 15s, and four rocket launcher 10s, giving it an incredible one-shot capability against the mech. The already overwhelming number of Firestarters in the near periphery though led to the failure of this particular design. The FS9K This one began production at the same time as the original model and mounts two flamers, a large laser, and two small lasers. While it was designed to be a companion model to this one, the H variant would prove more popular and would dominate production after it was introduced. The FS9M Nicknamed as the Mirage, this variant of the Firestarter debuted in 2893 and converts it from an incendiary mech to a frontline mech by removing the flamers and adding in their place two small lasers and three tons of armor. This variant was in production for only one year before the catastrophic battle which transformed the Argyle plant and the capital of Sky into a wasteland. The Sky Rangers did maintain several of the Mirages, including a lance with one arm painted black in commemoration of the event. The FS9M2 This one was manufactured on Coventry for the mercenary market in 3101, possibly a descendant of the B variant and almost the polar opposite of the M variant. It is an upgrade that is built on a Foundation ultralight endosteel chassis armored with 7 tons of Duralex Nova standard armor. 11 double heat sinks attempt to keep it cool, while a single Defiance ER medium laser mounted to the head and 3 hotshot flamers in each arm work to tax those heat sinks to the limit. The FS9M3 This one is a modification of the previously named M2, introduced in 3104 and optimized for artillery spotting. The three flamers in the left arm were removed, replacing them with a single ER small laser and a TAG laser designator to the right torso, allowing it to be a spotter for artillery. It also has a mask which allows it to go to speeds of up to 130 kph. 
the FS9M4. This is yet another rework of the M2 variant debiting in 3109. This one takes out one double heatsink, the ER medium laser and the three flamers in the left arm, and upgrades the engine to a 210XL mounting a single rotary AC2 in the left arm. This one is supplied by one ton of ammo in the left torso. The FS9S This one is an overhaul of the H variant introduced in 3049. The structure was upgraded to endosteel chassis, the weapons it carry are four hotshot flamers, two defiance medium lasers, and a single diverse optics small laser. A surefire 444 anti-missile system with one ton of ammo was added to protect against missile attacks. And a Cyclops Beagle active probe was installed to enhance its scouting role. And finally, the FS9P. This was manufactured by the Circinus Federation in 3064, and it is quite similar to the S variant, but it uses 10 double heat tanks. It removes the defensive and scouting equipment, as well as half a ton of armor to add an additional small laser and a pair of SRM-2s. These missile launchers are typically loaded with Inferno rounds. Brimstone is a small mercenary company specializing in incendiary warfare. Their tactics spare no target, from civilian housing to legitimate military target. They will sometimes follow specific directives of their employer, but most often they will rampage through the enemy's rear to sow destruction and mayhem. Despite being wanted criminals on many worlds, the Firestarter Heavy Brimstone Company never lacks for eager employers, especially since the blackout. Another interesting character associated with this mech is Force Captain Konstantin Habibula. Konstantin Habibula commands Habib's Half-Baked, the 2nd Andurian Rangers 3rd Battalion. His own mech is an FS9M3, which he prefers because of the improved speed and flexibility. Thanks to the mask system, he manages to keep tabs on the mechs, tanks and infantry under his command. Battles would always find him switching between different fronts to monitor the situation personally. As for the poll I promised, this is gonna be pretty straightforward, and it only regards what type of battle mech you would like to see next. Please vote the letter of the option you chose in the comments below. A. Another light mech. B. A medium mech. Or C. A heavy mech. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about on the curious but highly effective battle mech known as the Firestarter for today. Is this a bad boy among your favorite light battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? In my opinion, unlike most other battle mechs, regardless of category, I think that for this particular design you gotta be a little bit crazy to pilot it. After all, probably not everyone would be into piloting something dedicated exclusively to burning things. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all a happy and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.